Hey guys, Matt Allen here. What we're going to talk about today is swim jigs. As most of you guys know, it's one of my favorite baits, something we've talked about a lot in the past, but we haven't talked about it much recently. Felt like it was probably time to do a new swim jig video. Cover styles of heads, hook sizes, weights, trailers, skirts, all that stuff. Just a really in-depth swim jig video. So I want to do that with you right now. Uh, it is a holiday weekend. It's a little rough out here on the lake. A lot of boats going by. So I'm going to cut the video here, shoot back to the house. And we'll pick it up there. All right, guys, we're back here at the house. We're going to jump into this thing, talk about some swim jigs, some different styles, trailers, colors, you name it. Um, right off the bat, I do want to tell you, again, this is one of those videos where you're just stuck with me. Tim isn't here right now to be able to do the editing, so you get one camera angle. I can only get the bait so close for you. Uh, but in the video description, I'm going to put all these products because there's a ton of them. So we'll put all the products, links to all the products so you can blow them up, see big pictures. Everything you need will be in that product in that uh, video description. Uh, let's jump into it. You know, I don't know how many of you guys remember six years ago it's hard to believe six years ago on youtube we started shooting videos about the california swim jig uh, this was a product that kurt demrath the owner of dirty jigs tackle and myself developed basically just a little bit of history for you and i'll keep it brief uh, kurt and i were talking he was trying to get me into throwing swim jigs i was very resistant to the idea i live out here in california uh, at the time, it really wasn't something that we throw. Uh, Kurt was insistent. He sent me some swim jigs in different styles. And uh, I fished them, and I was surprised. They worked. But one thing I realized really quickly was that the industry was lacking on a heavy, heavy wire swim jig, a stout swim jig. They're not lacking anymore. There are a lot of companies making offerings, but the very first widely available heavy wire swim jig was that California swim jig that Kurt and I developed. It's incredible how far his products and the industry as a whole has come since that happened. It completely changed the style of swim jigs that were being fished. So let's take it from the beginning. We're gonna start with finesse style swim jigs. Uh, basically there are three styles. You know, you got finesse swim jigs, which are your northern, then you've got your, your regular stout wire, medium wire, heavy wire, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, that's like your Coosa River style swim jig. We'll get to that. And then the California swim jig, that's your extremely heavy wire, big fish, heavy cover, braided line. Uh, that's the other category. So three basic styles of swim jigs. So right off the bat, that finesse swim jig, typically going to feature a really light wire hook. Uh, I like to pair those with a variety of trailers. This is the only size where I think trailer uh, brand or model is less important. Uh, finesse swim jig, I'll pair it with something like a, a net bait little spanky or uh, the Reaction Innovations Little Dipper, uh, one of the small Kitek fat swing impacts. Any of those are going to work. The reason for that is that the jig is so light most of the time. Typically with a finesse swim jig, I'm maxing out at about a quarter ounce. Now I'm speaking for me personally. That's about my limit. So when I'm throwing these, I'm keeping it really lightweight, really simple. Now one thing I did there, I didn't even say I was doing it. Before I went to thread that trailer on, I cut the, the nub of it off, the nose of it off, just so that the the trailer 
and the head mate really well. Just a good clean transition. Now that little guy, that's what I'm gonna throw in my spotted bass lakes, smallmouth lakes, uh, even my, my large mouth lakes, if the, the fish tend to be smaller. Phenomenal pond bait. If you're a bank fisherman fishing the ponds, finesse swim jig is a great way to go. Not a super heavy wire, but it makes it fun, man. And because it's not a heavy wire hook, you don't need super heavy equipment to throw it. We're gonna come back to equipment, but it makes it a, a bait that you can throw on a lot of different rods and uh, you don't have to have specialized equipment for it. So you don't need to be carrying, if you're a bank guy, you don't need to be carrying a, a third or a fourth or a fifth rod just to throw that bait, which is really nice. Finesse swim jig, pretty straightforward. The way I generally fish that bait, I think of it as a spinner bait or a chatter bait. For the most part, that's how I think about all swim jigs. Uh, they're just a more natural presentation in a body of water where fish see the spinner bait, the chatter bait, a square bill, uh, you know, any of those fast moving baits that typically have a lot of flash or a lot of sound. When you go to that swim jig, you're still getting that presentation. You're getting that phenomenal movement in the skirt, uh, that secondary action. We've talked about that a lot over the years, uh, but secondary action is something that uh, a straight up swim bait does not have. A swim bait just has primary action. It's got that tail thump. But a swim jig, when that skirt starts to pulse and move as you bring it through the water, you get that secondary action, that skirt moving and flashing that's mimicking gill plates moving, uh, the flash coming off the scales, you know, all those other things that a real bait fish has that a swim bait does not have. So just an ultra realistic presentation for fish that are used to seeing everything else. Uh, the next style swim jig, kind of that medium wire swim jig. This is a dirty jigs uh, skirted swim jig. It's just that medium wire, all around, great swim jig. I love throwing this in Clear Lake, the Delta, uh, around here, basically all my lakes. This is just a great go-to. Again, I generally throw it in lighter sizes. This is, I'm just speaking for myself. I'll throw it up to about three eighths, occasionally all the way to a half ounce, but I usually cut off at three eighths. Once you start getting into that three eighths weight, especially with a denser skirt, uh, a, a higher skirt count, or a higher strand count rather in the skirt, trailer starts to matter more. Uh, I get really hung up when I'm on the forums or on Facebook or here on YouTube, and I see people talking about all the detail that goes into the swim jig, and then they're like, yeah, throw whatever trailer you want. I do not agree with that. I think the trailer matters as much, if not more, than the swim jig. See, the swim jig itself, it's got basically, what, three jobs. I want good movement. I want it to look really nice. I want a great paint job and a great skirt color. And then I want a head that will come through cover really well. If I've got those three things, well, and that hook, but you know, we've already covered that. Uh, if I've got those things in a jig, the jig is dialed. Don't worry about the jig. The key is going to be when we get to those trailers because the trailer is what imparts all of the action to that jig. It's the part that really is, is taking that inanimate jig and making it look lifelike. So don't just pick whatever trailer you've got and decide it's good enough. Now, if you're fishing a place where the fish don't care, more power to you, throw whatever trailer you want. But if you're fishing on a big body of water, a place where fish see some presentations, you want to be careful what you're using. Uh, so for that medium size, my number one bait that I throw is uh, a Kitek Fat Swing Impact. And this is the main reason we're doing this video right now. The jigs haven't changed, basically. Over the years, I'm throwing the exact same jigs that I was throwing when we shot the very first swim jig video. But the trailers have changed. There are a lot of different options on the market than there were a few years ago. Some of them are still the same, but not all of them. So I want to explain those differences. So when I get to that medium, that skirted swim jig, 
When I get there, now we're talking about a 3.3 or a 3.8 fat swing impact. When you get that guy on there, you just get the right balance. Because a, a lot of the trailers that are out there, or small swim baits that are out there, they've got a little bit of thump, a little bit of body roll, but when you put them onto a swim jig where it's actually got some mass, the jig overpowers a lot of that and you get very, very little action out of that trailer and it really deadens the jig. See, this jig, if I just go out and throw this thing as it is, I'm not gonna have a lot of action. The skirt's long, trailer's short, and this is only a 3.3 a three, three trailer on here. So a, a fairly narrow wobble. So one thing I'll do, if I'm gonna go for that smaller presentation, I'm gonna flip that jig upside down and I'm not worried about if I'm cutting my inside strands or my outside strands, okay? Does not matter. I'm gonna cut them all. And I'm gonna cut them short. Right about there. Really short. What that does is it takes a lot of weight off of these outside strands. You see how much wider they're standing now? Much, much more bulky. Well, when you get that into the water, they're gonna have more weight on them, so they won't look like this. They'll be pressed down more, but they want to rebound. They wanna push back against the water. So a Kytec fat swing impact, it's got a nice wide kick to it. Not a lot of body roll, especially on a swim jig. Just a big wide kick. Now the 3.3, three, not as big as the others, but still fairly wide kick for its size. So when you couple the wide kick kind of rocking the back of this bait, getting a little bit of head movement up in the front with a skirt that wants to press back against the water, that skirt will start to puff and it'll start moving itself as it comes through the water. So you might've seen the pros when they're out fishing, throwing that swim jig out and like pumping that rod while they're reeling it. Again, I'm not a pro, I am a guide. I do fish almost every day. Uh, I'd like to think I know some things about some of this but I'm not gonna argue with anybody, but I will say that if you match the perfect trailer with the right swim jig, you throw that thing out there and you just steady reel. Forget all this pumping, forget all that hard work, steady reel, that at skirt is gonna do the work on its own because it's working really well with that trailer. Now you put the wrong trailer on, you go to a trailer that has a lot of body roll and minimal tail kick, and you put it on too heavy of a swim jig, it's gonna kill it. You have to pump that rod to get the action. But if you balance it right, throw it out, let it fall, start rolling it, just like you would a spinner bait, but that skirt's gonna be going on its own. You will get more bites. Heavy wire, California swim jig. I love this thing. You guys know that. I don't know how many videos we've done over the years. I love them as much today as the first day I saw the prototypes. Uh, Trailers depends on the weight of the head. California swim jig, I personally throw it in the three eighths, half and three quarter. In the three eighths, I will throw it on a 4.3 Kytec. Now the 4.3, that's a really good size. It's a newer size. You know, we used to have the, the uh, 3.8 and a 4.8. When the 4.3 hit, I think that was earlier this year, maybe late last year. Man, that that was a big deal for me because it is a great fit for that 3 8 ounce jig. I typically don't need to trim this skirt at all. This tail is wide enough that it'll get that skirt pulse. And you can trim it a little bit if you feel like you're not getting enough action, but you don't have to. Now, when I go heavier, the half ounce, I didn't bring out a 4.8 Kytec, um, but when I go to the half ounce, I throw the 4.8. When I go to the three quarter, that's when I still do use that Robo or Meezy Shadow. I've gotten that question, Tim's gotten that question countless times. Do we still use that trailer? Better believe we do. Uh, on that three quarter ounce California Swim Jig, that heavier, heavier bait, and I'm telling you, it matters. The difference 
when you throw a Kitek, a fat swing impact, a 4.8, that Kitek is in the back of that bait and it's got that wide kick. If you put that on a three quarter, that 4.8 has so much kick that it's just running that whole swim jig. And it's, it's amazing. It just doesn't quite mesh right. Now, don't get me wrong. I've done it. I've caught a ton of fish doing it. But I think there's a better answer. And the reason why is with that much tail kick, it's like that tail is coming all the way around and slapping up against that skirt and pinning it down. When that thing's coming through the water, it looks like a swim bait, not a swim jig. When I go to the, the Robo Worm Easy Shad on that three quarter ounce, the Robo Worm doesn't have that super wide kick. It has more of a rolling kick. It's just enough rock to get that skirt off the body of that jig and get that secondary action. Just like that smaller Kitek does when we trim the skirt here, you get that exact action without trimming the skirt on the three corner, the three quarter. You just chuck and wind, that thing is just pulsing. Man, we catch so many big fish on that setup. Now again, as soon as I drop down to a half ounce, I make the switch. I go to the 4.8 fat swing impact Kitek. Uh, it just, it's just enough weight out of the head that that wide tail wobble, it gets the head going enough to get that skirt back off the body, getting that great action. Again, I started out telling you this was detail oriented. I'm telling you it is detail oriented. For every weight, I have a favorite trailer. For every weight, some of them get cropped or clipped, some of them don't. Uh, but again, I'm gonna lay all that out in that video description. So if I'm confusing you, don't worry about it. Keep rolling with the punches. You can always come back. Now the only other style of swim jig is gonna be your cross style. I throw these less, um, but across the nation, people throw them a lot. Uh, you know, the number one color, black, blue. But when I'm throwing that style, I use one of two trailers. I either use like a net bait Paca style trailer, whether that's the Paca Chunk or the Paca Craw, uh, but you know where it's got that big wide kick to it. The other one, a Rage Tail um, Structure, the Structure Bug, right? Yeah, the Structure Bug. I throw this on the back of a jig a lot too, like an on the bottom jig. Um, but the Structure Bug, any of those Rage Baits where it's, again, it's got that, that kick to it, does really well when you're trying to, to emulate a crawdad coming along the bottom. Uh, you don't want a dead trailer. This is where I go away from like a beaver style, style trailer. I do want some thump, some kick out of that trailer just to keep everything moving and going. So again, if I'm, if I'm going the craw route, either a Paca style or a Rage style is where I'm gonna go. But almost all of my swim jig fishing is imitating shad, shiners, you know, bluegill, sunfish, crappie, here's crappie. And color does matter. Uh, my primary colors, that's pumpkin seed brim. If you're a bluegill guy, that's an awesome one. This is Alabama brim. This is another one that I've just used for years and years and years with awesome success. There they are side by side. Uh, for shad, I actually throw crappie a lot. I think it's a great shad imitator. The other one is tactical shad. Those are my two favorites. This little guy, the one you saw me cut down, that's called light hitch. Uh, it's, it looks like a hitch. It looks like a shiner. It looks like a shad. It's a killer color. Uh, I keep it pretty simple. Those are my personal favorites. Uh, you know, everybody's got their own favorites, but if I could only pick a few, the only thing I'd add to that would be a citrus shad, you know, your chartreuse and blue, murky water, or if I get into striper, chartreuse and blue is where it's at. They love citrus shad. But that's it. I keep those fairly, fairly simple because I can change my trailer color to accent them. I don't have to be changing skirts all the time. You don't need 40 different colors of swim jig. Four or five colors, six colors, you're pretty good. Carry three or four weights, a couple different hook styles, you're dialed in. Now, 
rods. Um, I'm not even going to bother picking up all these rods to explain it to you because this video is going to get long. But for rods, um, on a really light swim jig, if I'm going on a finesse swim jig, like I said, you can throw that on almost anything. It's a fairly light wire hook. I would compare it to like a shaky head kind of a hook. You know, if you're throwing a eighth ounce shaky head or a three eighths shaky head, quarter ounce, something like that, that's about that wire size. So you could probably throw that on, on a decent spinning rod. Uh, personally, I throw it on like a seven foot to a seven foot two uh, medium. That's where I like to throw it. Um, almost a medium heavy, but usually a medium. The only exception, one rod that I really like to throw it on is, uh, I'm totally gonna butcher it. I think it's the 908. Let me look. 906. 906. The CB, it's a Loomis. It's a Loomis crankbait rod. It's not a cheap rod, uh, but it's a great rod. It's a rod that I do a lot of deep cranking on. A CBR 906, seven foot six, but because it's a medium heavy, they might even call it a heavy, but because it's a crankbait rod, it's super tippy. So I'm able to fish that lighter wire hook without having a problem. I can also get away with throwing that medium hook on that same one without a problem because you get through that tip into that backbone and then it's still a crankbait rod. So I can throw, you know, I can throw lipless on it. I throw, what do I throw? Like a DD22, I throw the 5XD, the 6XD, a lot of different crankbaits on that rod too. So that's a, a very universal option. Um, but otherwise, you know, a Wormin rod, a really light jig rod, seven foot, seven two, seven three, you're dialed. Uh, when you get to the California swim jig, that's a little bit different deal. The California swim jig, stout hook, right? So you want it on proper gear or there's no point in having a stout hook. So I throw this on uh, a 7.3 to 7.6, medium heavy to heavy rod. You can even throw it on a flipping stick. Done that for years. Uh, that 7.65 flip is a phenomenal rod to pair with the three quarter ounce. Uh, if I'm going down to the half or the three eighths, then that's a little too much rod. Uh, but a 7.3 to 7.6, medium heavy to heavy. I mean, this hook, it's hard for you guys to see how stout this hook is, but it's, it's beefy. It's literally, even today, there are other jigs on the market using that same beefy hook, but there is not a heavier hook on the market. That is still the heaviest hook out there. So if you're around big fish, if you're in California, if you're in Texas, Florida, or if you happen to be in another state, but you just throw on some giant fish and don't want to tell anybody, that California swim jig, it's just one less thing to worry about. When you jack a giant fish on that thing, they're not coming off, man. They're not coming off and you're not bending out. So I typically throw it on 50 to 65 pound braid and then either a 20 or a 25 pound leader. Uh, typically a mono leader for me. The smaller guys, I'll throw those on, you know, a 30 to 50 pound braid uh, tied to a 15, even a 12 on the small one, 12 to 15, 17 pound leader, anywhere in there. And you can even get away with throwing those on straight fluorocarbon. Again, the California swim jig, personally, I wouldn't touch that thing with fluoro because it's designed to just smash them, throw that thing on braid, do what it's designed to do. Now, speed. This is another critical thing with these baits. Uh, there's more than one way to fish them. The primary way, chuck them out, roll that thing back like we've talked about. If you get that skirt and that bait balanced right, it's gonna do the work for you. So just a medium retrieve, that's all you need. But when the water starts getting cold, there's a whole nother application for the swim jig. And that is slow bottom crawling. Uh, when I take that presentation, usually the three quarter ounce, occasionally the half ounce, I'm just creeping that thing on bottom. Now at that point, that skirt, it's doing nothing because the kick in the back is not strong enough to get that, that skirt going. That skirt's glued down. I'll admit that, it looks like a swim bait. The difference, and I think it matters the most when I'm throwing a bluegill style or a bluegill color, 
If I'm in rock, especially rock or under docks or around wood, anything I can bang into. When this thing is just pinned down, that bait is pretty slim, right? Looks more like a shad than anything else. But when it's poofed way up, it gets big and it gets that panfish look to it. When I'm creeping around cover, slow as I can stand to go, that thing, I don't know if you can even see down here, but it's just, it's just digging bottom. That's all it's doing, man. That tail's barely going, barely going. But when you get to an object and you hit it, the shock of the impact, that skirt puffs up. And I think that makes all the difference in the world. In my mind, what that looks like is you got a little bluegill cruising across the bottom with a giant bass looking at him, just thinking about when he's going to eat it. Right, and that thing's coming along and it hits and all that skirt puffs up. It looks like he's startled. His fins go up. He doesn't know what to do. I can't tell you how many times I've been creeping and bump. I hit something and fish murders it. They hit it so hard when that happens. That's all I can think it is. That skirt puffs up. It totally just gives that look of a, of a fish that thought it was good to go, thought it was creeping through, and now it's startled and it's in trouble. And that just, that just plays with a bass. That is, that's when they're designed to kill. That's how bass operate. So when you're bottom creeping, instead of throwing a swim, a swim bait this year, if you're in a bluegill lake or a shad lake or uh, you know anything with herring in it or hitch, shiners, basically anything but like a great big trout or a kokanee, throw a swim jig this year. Bottom bounce that thing just like it's a big swim bait. But I'm telling you, when you start bumping into cover and that thing starts puffing up and you will get strikes from fish that won't touch anything else. The swim jig is phenomenal. Six years ago, I was barely a believer. You know, Kirk had just started talking me into it. Now that the years have ticked by and the thousands of fish have ticked by, we've caught double digits on them, caught tons and tons of fish in that five to eight, five to nine pound range. They just catch fish. It's something that you need to do. You need to add it to your arsenal. In the East, they threw it for a long time before we caught on. We're a little slow out here in the West sometimes. Sometimes the trends come from us, sometimes they come from the East. But the swim jig, coast to coast, top to bottom, there's a place for it. You will catch big fish. So I hope that that helps you guys. Uh, I know it's confusing talking about different weights and which ones you trim and which trailers and sizes, but I'm gonna cover again all that down there in the bottom of the video, down there in the description, links to each one of them so you can see what we're talking about. I hope this helps. If you do have questions, put them down there in the comments. Either Tim and I will respond to you. Uh, whatever it is, we're gonna answer you. We'll make sure you understand what's going on with these things. We appreciate your support. Hit that like button, share this video with your friends, share the channel with your friends. We, we love that support, we appreciate it. We hope this helps, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.